The Money Show. Personal Finance with Warren Ingram. To financial advisor Warren Ingram we go this evening. How do the world's wealthy invest, Warren, and what can we learn from them? I, I love um, studying how you know how people invest in the real world with real money, you know, rather than just sort of you know dry academic studies. And and for me, the most interesting ones are the are, are the people that have have achieved financial success. And and so, you know, looking at studies of them, especially over long periods of time, is is always fascinating. Not, not from the point of view that we need to copy them exactly because you know that's not possible but there are some real big themes that we can follow and for me they're, they're kind of three main themes the one is you know, you know what's the mix of assets that they've got in their portfolio what's the breakup between cash bonds property shares and and then you know secondly you know how much effort do they put into trying to forecast the market and try and understand you know where, where markets are going when should they be buying when should they be selling and and then lastly how much effort they put into choosing shares, choosing bonds, choosing properties, uh, you know, in, in the kind of traditional you know, language for that is stock picking. And and so for me, those are the three big themes. And and when we look at the mix of assets in their investments, re- really interesting to note that, that they end up looking like an average balanced fund in South Africa. It's, it's really, uh, for, for me, was really interesting. You know, uh, only about two thirds of their investments are in shares, about twenty five percent in in government bonds and corporate bonds, and then uh, and then the balance uh, about ten percent in cash. And if you look at an average balanced fund in South Africa, Bruce, over a ten or twenty year period, that's how they that's how they invest their money. So I- interesting on that point that I guess the, the the world's wealthy are not not that different from the rest of us uh, or, or ordinary people out there. And 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 you know the, the, I think the focus there is that they're they're trying to kind of have a long term. A balanced mix of of assets with with a bias towards shares, which uh, over long periods of time are already the asset type that will grow your your money faster than inflation. And and then you hold bonds and you hold cash um, in most markets, except for last year. But bonds and cash are the assets that yeah. that give you a stabilizer against the roller coaster ride of of shares. So for for me, maybe what was surprising is is that it's not different. It's not unique. That they're not. Kind of full up on on strange structures or fancy guaranteed products or whatever. Fairly generic, fairly basic, fairly simple, and something all of us can emulate. And and for me, that's very comforting, actually. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to institutional investing, lots of wealthy families may put some money aside, however, to be a bit more adventurous. They might go and invest in friends, fools and family businesses, for example. They may look for opportunities to, uh, more often than not, really, because they're just curious as to whether people can grow business as well and to advise on that. But we're not talking about that. We're not talking about the, the sort of venture capital side of things. We're talking about just traditional family money, people that would, um, you know, families with with decent amounts of wealth who look to the long term in markets. And this is what is so absolutely critical, isn't it, in terms of uh, a lot of people go, well, I'm not going to get into markets right now. Markets right now are just so uncertain. I'm going to wait until things are certain. I'm going to wait till things look better. I'm going to wait till things are safer. Um, and people, you know, with long-term time horizons don't really care when they're investing in markets, how they, they, they care about the how, not the when. Absolutely. And, and if you look at, uh, if you look at how, how frequently they actually buy or sell anything, uh, only one in two, so only half of them would do any transaction over a 12 month period. I mean, and, and then if they do a transaction, the, the average size of that transaction is less than 10% of, of their portfolios. Now, now, I mean, if we think how many times we get asked the question about people saying, you know, I'm really worried about markets. Shouldn't I just sell all my shares? In, in other words, now they're 100% of their portfolio is what they're looking at. You know, moving 100% of my shares into cash or 100% of my bonds or the other way around. You know, I think the markets are really offering great value. Shouldn't we go from you know 100% cash to to 100% in shares again? And and the world's wealthy just simply don't do it. They 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 don't. They're not active. They they're in in fact very relaxed, very calm. Uh, they might be panicking inside, but they're not reflecting that in the way that they're managing their money. They're they're allowing the the portfolio that they've got to to do its job, which is generate long term growth. And and they don't they, they've kind of walked away from this idea of market timing. Uh, and and I think it's a key point. You know, we we need to be 
humble enough as investors, and, I, and I'm saying it, you know, for private and professional investors alike, is what we need to be humble enough to know that in most conditions, we actually don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, forget about three or six months time. Uh, and and when you don't know what to do, you know, develop a long term strategy, you know, have a nice mix of assets and, and then stick to that strategy, especially when times get rocky and and the news gets scary and, you know, you hear about banks falling over in America and getting forced marriages of banks in Switzerland. All of that stuff is frightening. Uh, that's not a reason to sell. That, you know, that's maybe the, the 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 time to double down on your strategy and stay invested. And, you know, if you've got a bit of extra cash, keep allocating it to that mix. And and I think that that's what they, they're doing. They're just simply not not trading in, in any conditions and most especially volatile conditions so so i think f f for me very very interesting to see that very comforting again because probably something we've said thousands of times by now without uh, resorting to hyperbole but we, we said that on the show so many times you know don't trade don't panic uh, and and now looking at the world's wealthy uh, you know the ones that have actually achieved success with their money over long periods of time that's exactly what they're doing so i think it's something we should be listening to and paying more attention to when it comes to investing, and I mean, the, the question I'm asked most on social media platforms, people email me, they say, I want to learn to trade because I want to invest. And those are two contrary ideas. And I immediately um, refer them to How to Make Your First Million, um, which is a book that Warren Ingram wrote, which says, don't trade, don't be a twit, invest. Uh, but what's interesting about the, the, the data that's come out of Vanguard is the vast majority of people who invest use unitrusts. They use index funds. Very few hold individual shares. And probably those that hold individual shares are those that have got some level of experience or some level of insight, some level of wisdom over built up over a period of time that gives them the confidence to manage at least part of their money themselves. Absolutely. And and I think, um, you know, if we had to look at the number of people, uh, you know, investing in shares as opposed to the size of assets, but just the number of people, there probably are m many thousands of 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 individuals who who buy and sell shares but but if you look at where the volume of money in where's the sheer weight of assets it's actually sitting in unit trusts and and i thought that was really fascinating you know so you know, only a third of the world's wealthy own own individual shares the, the balance of their money is, is sitting in unit trusts what what it tells you is they're not uh, that they're, they're not fooling themselves uh, that, that they know better than the market that they're simply happy to buy buy uh, you, you know trusts and let the fund managers do their job uh, and, and for me that's that's a really important and, and I suspect I don't have the data uh, you know even even in that Vanguard study which is what 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 we're looking at here uh, I, I couldn't find w whether those individual shares that they own might just be uh, you know the result of of share options for example you know a lot of people will work for a company for a long period of time build up you know shares that they're given as part of their their remuneration package and that might be a big chunk of of the wealth creation that they've had and and why they've got individual shares but certainly they're rotating out of those individual shares into unit trust and and I think that's that's another pointer you know um, I mean I can't stand seeing all the ads on social media where you see trading sites you know saying we'll teach you how to trade whether it be shares or foreign exchange or cryptos etc and, and and to me you know, all that's doing is generating uh, transaction revenue in other words they want to make money off you buying or selling that's why they're they're happy to advertise but but just understand what what you're doing is you're converting your long long term hard earned savings into their uh, bonuses at the end of the month or the year uh, you're not generating wealth for yourself Tra trading simply just doesn't make money for most people in most conditions it, it's just it's really not a, a, a good way to make money. And, and there's a reason that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are really famous and and traders are not. And it's because they don't make money over periods of time. They're, they're the ones that are lucky every now and then, but the bulk of them aren't. What, what, what was really, uh, really, really surprising for me was, uh, and, and, and one um, I suspect will, will change over time. Let, is, let, let, let's uh, let's pause, pause on that thought for a moment, because I just want to look at this individual shares thing, because you're going to move on to passive investing in just a moment, I suspect, because you've got that, <laughs> you've got your passive investing voice on, um, and because you know you have that. Um, investing in individual shares, again, 
it, just because you're investing in individual shares doesn't mean that you're sitting at home in your underpants on your weekends trading shares or putting positions in on shares. So often, um, wealthy people who have got sh- uh, unit trust portfolios can also run private client portfolios. They can also have a handful of shares that have got a, a level of, of, of oversight. They've got a stockbroker's account. They, they consult a stockbroker. They're not doing this off their own bat completely. Um, they may very well be taking advice on those trades when and very occasionally they make them, whether it is to add to a holding or release a holding, for example. True, true. and I think, uh, you know, very often it might be very specific uh, situations where they own shares, you know, where, where they've got a long history with a particular company or, you know, they, they, they come from a particular sector of the industry. You know, let's just say someone works in mining and, and they, they know mining very well and and they they respect management of one or two mining houses they might buy mines very specifically then or you know airlines or whatever it is whatever the 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 speciality is that they've got you might find that they use their deep knowledge uh in, in a particular area then to to take advantage of that deep knowledge uh but but i can tell you what they're certainly not doing is they're not going to fin twitter uh, and and looking at you know someone who started writing articles last week and hasn't got any money and 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 you know and, and a big following and and listening to those people because those are the ones that have cost investors most of their savings in the last two or three years you know when you find some influencer you know targeting Warren Buffett and saying you know what an idiot he is and what a dinosaur he is and then you watch how that influencer is busy blowing up his portfolio now uh, um, you, you just realize you, you know. Large Twitter followings or large social media followings doesn't equate to investment knowledge. It just means you're good at taking pictures and, and saying controversial nonsense. It, it doesn't mean that you you know what you're doing. How and do you and I think that's how, the point. How do you feel about that, Warren? Anyway, let's not go there because otherwise <laughs> we, we, we'll we be here till midnight. Um, talk to me about passive investing then. You'll put back your passive investing voice um, and, and take me through this idea of passive investing and the big shift to passive investing. It's been a trend all over the world in many, many places. We as South Africans have been less inclined, but I think we're gradually more inclined towards so-called passive investing. I say so-called passive investing because you do still have to make decisions about where you put your passive investment. But to, talk to me about the trend. Well, you know, Bruce, how's that for my passive investing? No, no, investing no, 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 no. That, that, um, that's just so, your fake. So very voice. quickly, passive uh, passive investing is uh, you, you buy, the, the let, let's say in South Africa, you buy the top 40 or the top 50 shares uh, on the stock exchange. So you're not applying any thoughts to you know what to buy or what to sell. You're simply buying one investment that 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 mechanically tracks the the biggest companies on on, on the JSC, and you can find these all around the world. You know wh- whether it be in the US or, or simply the entire world stock market, um, and and you know passive because no one's being paid to second guess what's going on. They're simply being paid to implement a, a mechanical calculation and and then put a portfolio together that you can then buy. Uh, and and you know I think it's a, a very good way of investing. Interesting to note that I think uh, I think in in the US uh, it's it's now just uh, you know passive investing has just overtaken active investing. Active investing just to break that is then paying fund managers or stockbrokers to to forecast where they think the world or the stock markets are going, and then they buy and sell individual shares to try and beat the the the, the, the stock market. Uh, and for a long time, active investing was the only uh, the only game in town. But but over the last while, you know, last two or three decades, active investing has been growing incredibly quickly. And I think now I'm right in saying in the US that it's now slightly bigger than than, than active investing. But when we look at the world's wealthy, uh, interesting to note that more than seventy five percent of their investments are still allocated to active funds. I, I, I am I was sitting down, so I didn't fall over when I read that, and and I found that. Deeply surprising. Uh, can't, I can't tell you why. I think it might be historical that they've had money in, in these funds for a long time. As we said, they don't like to trade. So so what, what they hold, if they're comfortable with the holding, they're not going to sell. And I suspect that's part of the reason that they, that you know active investing is still such a big chunk of of, of their assets. But but for for those of us you know, you know who are not sitting in that position, uh, I, I would suggest maybe still a blend. You know that you you don't just have one or the other. Don't be too absolute in your investment strategy. It's okay to hold some index and 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 some active invest investments together, and, and nothing wrong with that. Just don't chop and change and trade them. I think is maybe the the more important point. And and maybe the the biggest point out of all of this is. 
number one, you need to invest. You can't be sitting on the sidelines being fearful about, uh, you know, stock markets rising and falling. And I think that's, you know, that's probably the most powerful message. And and actually spending too much time and effort and, and getting into analysis paralysis about exactly what to buy doesn't make sense to me. I think you know that's maybe what 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 I'm the other thing I'm learning from the, the world's wealthy is that they they get in, they stay invested. Sure, they might not be in the absolute lowest cost, most efficient portfolio, and, and they can't be if they've got most of their money in active funds, but they're okay to hold those and, and that they allow their capital to keep right. growing and to keep compounding. Fabulous, Warren Ingram. Thank you. In a moment, uh, a question from Greg. Greg says he's got a decent sum of money sitting in a bank account overseas. He's quite worried about it because of big bank failures. What other ways can he use to store his cash? What a lovely problem to have, Greg. That with Warren in a moment. The Money Show. Personal Finance with Warren Ingram. Warren Ingram, Greg's problem, he's got cash sitting in a bank account now. He's worried about banks uh, falling over, which is one of the reasons why there are runs on banks around the world. People are worried about banks falling over. But uh, as you say, it's never a good thing to keep money in the bank for too long. We need to be finding accessible, more sensible ways of storing our cash so that in a month or two we can get hold of our money um, without risking the capital should uh, the unthinkable happen, and that is a bank failure. Absolutely. And, and it's so interesting to see, you know, and, and such a credit to the Reserve Bank in South Africa that, you know, we, we've been through two rather significant uh, financial sector events around the world and, and South Africa comes out of it most of the time, you know, very unscathed. And that's that's because we're so well regulated and, set, you know, have such a good regulator on this. But, but w- when you're sitting with deposits in a bank account, it's important to know that if you've got money in a, in a money market account, uh, at a bank or, you know, in a fixed deposit at a bank, th- those are your assets, but they also sit on the balance sheet of the bank. And if the bank hits the wall, you you, you might lose those deposits. And, you know, in South Africa, the first 100,000 rand of your cash that's on deposit would be protected by by a, a reserve bank guarantee. And in the US, it's $250,000, Sw- Switzerland, about 100,000 francs. So, so many of the big central banks or governments will underwrite some of the deposit. But important to know that your, your your assets then form part of their balance sheet. And if you want to prevent that, th- then you need to look at something, for example, very simple, like a money market unit trust. So it's a different to a money market account at a bank. Uh, it's a money market unit trust. And and uh, the, the reason that's very different is because the, the assets are only owned by you as an investor in that money market unit trust and all the other investors in that in that unit trust. You know, even if the, the, the money market unit trust was launched by a bank, all they've got is the right to earn some fees on that account. That they, they don't have rights to those assets. Uh, they, they can manage the assets and they can try and give you a return. But if they hit the wall, your assets are are safe. And I, I think that's an important thing if you are, are worried about banks falling over. And and as you said, Bruce, at the start, uh, you know, don't sit with too much cash for too long. You know, that's a great way to to kind of stagnate and 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 destroy the buying power of your money. But if you legitimately need to hold cash. Uh, and and you are worried, then you know make sure you stay below those uh, guaranteed limits of the of the reserve bank uh, um, guarantees wherever your money is. And and then secondly, you know potentially hold that cash in in one or two money market unit trusts. And and always, you know that's what the SVB uh, people need to learn as well is don't be greedy. Don't go for the very highest interest rates offered by banks because maybe they're taking a bit too much risk that you can't see. So so rather you know rather err on the side of caution and and. Be safe with your money and and spread it if you need to. I, I feel I feel that's probably the best answer for for Greg. Thank you, Warren Ingram. Especially with inflation here, inflation running at seven percent in the US, around six point nine in the UK, back in double digits once again, and uh, in the European Union, different inflation levels all over the place, but certainly elevated inflation. The longer you keep your money in a bank account, the quicker it loses its buying power, it loses its value, it's corroded by inflation. You need to be looking for the best possible returns if you want accessibility to that cash, of course, into those money market accounts, as Warren suggests. That's that's a wrap for The Money Show for this evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Warren Ingram, thank you for your contribution as always.